Hello everybody, Dangerous Things here. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another full episode of Boom Beach. Not a 30 seconds of Boom Beach was Dangerous Thing, which a few of you have seemed to have enjoyed. And if you guys have any comments, do let me know what you want to see more of or you know whether or not you've been enjoying the 30 second series. So today I'm coming to you looking like a bunny because I wanted to once again let you guys know that you should follow me at Game on Bunnies on Twitter just so you can um, get all the recent updates of what I'm up to, what I'm doing, and when the next videos are live because as you know sometimes I am not the most punctual person when it comes to releasing my videos on time so if you want to be up to speed with me and uh, see what's going on follow me at Game on Bunnies on Twitter and I'm gonna drop a link below in the description so click that follow button and be up to the times, up with the times. Anyway, let's jump in into this video and today I'm bringing you an episode of going over of one of the most recent uh, task force operations that my TF went through. And uh, I did make an announcement a few weeks ago that I'm going to be opening my TF to, four, um, to 50 people once I hit the 400 VPs. Right now, let me check, I think I am at 356, so almost 360, and I've upgraded my radar not long ago, so now I have more NPC bases and real player bases to go ahead and attack, so hopefully I will be to uh, up to 400 VPs in no time, and at which point I will open up my, uh, my task force to 50 people. Another thing is I recently have opened up one spot into my task force to welcome in the game hunter. He is a really good friend of mine and um, you know we've been playing video games together for quite some time now. Um, I've actually done a few videos with him on his channel of Vainglory and various other games because he does a ton more games than I do. So I welcomed him in into my task force and I actually kicked out one of the really good players. Um, AVH was a wonderful team player and as soon as I'm opening my TF250 people, I hope he'll be back and he will be the first person to be welcomed back into my task force because unfortunately I had to sacrifice his spot and I felt absolutely horrible. You can ask Game Hunter. I was uh, texting him after and I told him that my heart was breaking and he was telling me that I should be less dramatic because it's no big deal. So. Um, yeah, hopefully soon we're going to be up to 50 people and I'm going to, you know, get to know 25 more folks um, more closely. I feel like at this point, um, you know, we have a pretty tight TF and I know almost everybody's, you know, I, I guess, uh, styles of playing, you know, what they do, whether or not they're married, have a girlfriend, have kids or whatnot. So it's really, really awesome to get to know you guys better. But enough talking, let me jump in and I'm going to show you the highlights of the most recent operation that was completed or semi-completed, I guess, because we actually didn't take down one of the bases. So I'm going to show you just the highlights. And the reason I'm going to show you just the highlights is because I felt like this one here was a perfect example of various different styles of all of the members of my task force. Let me go ahead and look into Operation Bottleneck. And here is what went down in Bottleneck. We had Monkey Men, which by the way, awesome, awesome nickname. Monkey Men who took down uh, Gambit with all warriors. So we got an all warriors strategy right here. Um, coming your way in just a second. After Monkey Men, we had Jabik who destroyed uh, Excel with you know, the very well known to me and very comfortable and very favorite combination of hookahs of mine. Then we had, um, so this is Flo, who basically took down uh, Armadillo with uh, skinks or tortures, whichever one you guys prefer. And after him, we had Ghost, who destroyed Crunch with, as the game hunter would say, mecha healing combo of medics and tanks. So let's go through those and let's see how they worked out and why those strategies are so absolutely fabulous when it comes to taking down operational bases or going against NPC or real player bases. So let's jump in. Okay, let's jump in and let's take a look at the operation done by Monkey Man and he took down Gambit by using all warriors. So let's take a look and let's talk about how amazing all warrior attacks are. Now we all know that I am not the best at all warrior attacks, but one of the key ingredients at making an all warriors attack successful is obviously, you know, making sure that you shock 
those buildings, defense buildings that are right by the core or right by the HQ of the NPC base or right by the HQ of the real time player base. And, you know, and, and saving, obviously saving up your GBE because, you know, flaring up the troops and smoking them if you're doing the smoke screen or whatnot takes a lot of energy. And then you have to make sure that you have enough for the final round when you're just shocking all of the nearby defense buildings, which is what went down here really, really well. Monkey Man made sure that, you know, he saved up all the energy so that he can direct the troops right to the core, shock all the nearby cannons and make sure that this operation was pure success. So live and learn, job well done. Okay, then after Monkey Man, we had Jabik who destroyed Excel with hookah attack. So let's go ahead and let's look at what he did here. First of all, he took down took down one of the defense buildings right by the core, then he flares his troops all the way to the left hand side so he can successfully direct them out of the way. Oh, and look at that, there is a tree on the power core base. That's interesting. I have never seen one of those before. So he goes ahead and he shocks the rocket launcher because he knows that as soon as he gets closer, it's gonna start hitting up his troops and then he throws some critters to distract the cannons, boom cannons, and takes it down just like that. And once again, it can get over by that tree. I have never seen a tree growing on the straight concrete, but that's really cool. So that was really beautiful. Once again, successful hookah operation. And uh, yeah, you know, I, you know, I love Zookas and Havis together. I think they are a magic combination. Marriage made in heaven. And let's take a look at Flo taking down Armadillo using the infamous Scorchers or Torchers or Skink attack, whichever one you prefer. And basically he throws down some critters right over there to distract and um, you know direct the attention away from his uh, tanks and his Scorchers and gets closer and closer to the core with every single second and takes it down just like that. Now let's take a look at the base before he landed there. We obviously know that this is, you know, a team effort. So by the time that Flo landed his troops on the beach, or whatever you call it, because really this is not a beach, it's more like a concrete shore, a whole bunch of defense buildings was taken down. But, you know, it still takes strategy and whatnot to understand, you know, obviously what troop works, troops works best for you and, you know, what you're most comfortable with and what's going to do the best for the team to then go ahead and carry out the attack. And, uh, you know, this was a beautiful example of perfect coordination. And even though Scorchers were kind of just hanging out and doing their own thing because, you know, they just kind of go wild and go crazy on the, um, on the base, but he still was able to reflare them at the right time and make sure that he took down the core. So that was beautiful job well done. One once again, I cannot wait until I upgrade my um, my armory so I can finally have my Scorchers because I've already upgraded the HQ. They are sitting right there just one step away, but I still have to upgrade my armory and I cannot wait. Give me those resources. I wish you could like transfer resources in Boom Beach from one player to another and I think I'm just gonna remove my bunny ears because you all already got the gist. Follow me at Game on Bunnies on Twitter and stay with the times. Why am I struggling with this concept? Anyway, I wish you could transfer resources from one player to another in Boom Beach. That would be absolutely awesome because so many Max Town players are in my task force and they all brag about, you know, how many how many power stones they have and how much loot they have. And I'm like, come on now, don't rub it in. It hurts, it hurts, it hurts right here. It hurts my heart. Okay, now let's take a look at Ghost, who took down Crunch. And I actually, um, you know, we were talking because we did it this morning where I was so close and I promised I was only gonna show winning attacks, but maybe I'm gonna show you this one just, just because it was so close, you guys. And I'm gonna fast forward it, but I thought for sure that I had it. I had my hookahs. Um, and I was so close to taking down the power core. I mean, look at it. Look at these Zookas absolutely going ham on the power core and look at the power core energy right there. There was literally almost nothing left and I got 
got wiped out. I was so pissed. I was so enraged, you know, and then Ghost went ahead and finished it up for me because that's what real teammates do. They go ahead and they finish your mistakes. But I could tell you, I, I can tell you, I tasted the victory. It was so close, but not exactly. So now let's take a look at Ghost who used mecha healing combo of uh, tanks and medics. And uh, you know, by this point, he just threw in a barrage at the core to weaken it up even more and just like that. I don't even think he ended up actually, you know, uh, hitting up the uh, core with the tanks because I think he just threw a barrage. Let's, let's actually look at um, two times the speed. So he throws in the barrage and then he deploys his troops and he flares them at it and then he throws in an artillery shot and takes it out with an artillery shell. So that was really, really well done. And I kind of wish that I could take it down, but I was just this close. If I had like three more Zookas there with me, it would be a done deal, but I didn't. So it didn't quite work out. So this was just a highlight of my previous operation. Uh, very different attacks. We got the mecha healing combo. We had tortures of skinks. We had hookahs and we had all warriors. The only thing we didn't have is uh, like all, um, you know, all riflemen or all grenadiers or all tanks or all scorchers. So maybe, just maybe, I will do one of the attacks. I'll take it to a consideration and talk to my task force. Maybe we can have like a day where we do a task force all together and we all use exact same troops. So either all Zookas, all Heavies, all Warriors, all Tanks, all Scorchers. Well, actually some of my lower level players don't have Scorchers and um, lower level players myself here. So I'm thinking about doing something like that. Let me know if you guys would like that and maybe you could vote on what is the uh, troop combo that we could use that day would be um, in comments below section. So. Um, yeah, that's just it for this episode and let me go ahead and collect my diamonds for a war chest because I just finished upgrading my gold storage to level 10, which was a long time in the making and uh, now I can finally collect my diamonds and looking at it actually, I only have very few things to complete so I can get my rewards. So I'm gonna keep working on it and uh, yeah. Um, I finished upgrading one of my landing crafts level 16, so now I have two level 16 landing crafts right here, and the rest of them are 15, so just gonna keep on upgrading them so I can host more and more scorchers once they become available. I think that will be it for this episode, you guys. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Let me know if you want us to, if, if you want my task force to do any sort of crazy TF operations together in comments below, and I'm gonna check out until next time dangerous thing is out.